Christine. Today we're talking about Cassandra Clare's new book and her Infernal Device series that goes along with the Mortal Instrument series. This is book two. It's called The Clockwork Prince. It was awesome. I am so excited. This is going to be chock full of spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I would leave. If you do want to be spoiled, you're welcome to stay. And if you've already read it, exciting stuff. Jim's on the cover. Quit striking. I don't know if we should just talk about the curse right now. Let's talk about the curse right now. So Clockwork Angel ends with this will going to see Magnus about this curse. And this curse was heartbreaking. I was actually crying while he told Magnus what actually happened to him. First of all, Will's whole curse is a product of bad parenting. What kind of parents who are shadow hunters keep a demon box where you can die from a demon coming out of a box? And you could just open, like opening, when you have small children. And if you say, don't touch those things, kids, what do you think the kid's going to do? Go touch it. So obviously, 12-year-old boy, Will, is going to be like, oh, I want to touch the box. You have to tell the kids that box is death. Or put a lock on it. Or put it in a locked drawer. Or don't have a demon fox in your house. Will is blaming himself. Who's to blame here? His parents. If you're Shadow Hunters and you're gonna keep your Shadow Hunter stuff, tell your kids and about the Shadow Hunter stuff that can kill you. And it's interesting, because it's not that anyone he loves will die, it's anyone that loves him. So that's why he's such an ass face to anyone that shows affection toward him all the time. After all this trouble he goes through, the demon's like, oh, actually that was just a big lie. Ha ha ha. Then Will is all, yeah, I'm gonna go tell Tessa. And I was like, go tell Tessa, I'll run and tell her right now. Of course, there's a knock on Tessa's door, and of course, it's Jem. Oh. Then, Jem has the nerve to ask her to marry him. Don't you think Jem sees how Will looks at Tessa? I, what kind of friend are you? I don't know. I don't know, Jem. Tessa, just say you have to think about it. I know you don't want to hurt his feelings. Say you have to think about it. I'm only 16. You're a shadow hunter. I'm not. Just say you have to think about it, Tessa. He keeps saying he loves her. She never says she loves him. She doesn't say I love you. Ever. He's like, I love you, and she's like, give me the pendant, I'll make him happy, because how can I bear to make him sad? He's sick, he's dying. She's like, I love him, I love him. She has to tell herself that. I'm sorry, Tessa, but if you have to tell yourself that you love him, you don't. It's so frustrating to see Will crumbling. What do I do, my best friend and the girl I love? So frustrated. Then we have them announcing their engagement. No, Jem, stop it. And Jem's like prancing about, I'm engaged to Tessa. Will, thanks for saving his life. I know you did it for me. <sighs> he didn't do it for you, Jem. Not everything's about you. This is so frustrating. She's gonna end up like not being with any of them because it's like too heartbreaking. Or Jem has to die. That's, Jem has to die. Okay, let's go on. But, you know, this is second book syndrome. I don't know how they're gonna get out of it, but they have to. It's book two, and she's with Jem, which means being with Jem is not what's gonna happen in the end. Claire's with Simon. She's not gonna be with Simon in the end. Oh, poor Will. Poor Will. Back to the book. Cassandra Claire's books are hilarious. This book did not disappoint. Hilarious as well. Tessa is so witty. Charlotte is actually a fair child. I was like, oh god! Charlotte is related to Clary. We go to this meeting about Charlotte running the institute. Because she's a woman and women can't run institutes. Benedict is all, the women don't think with logic, but a man would not have been fooled in the end. Shut up. You're an asshole, Benedict. With demon pox. I like how we got foreshadowed demon pox. The previous book. With Will in Clockwork Angel, Will references, Oh, nothing I didn't do to your sister. And Gabriel's like, Shut up, you did this to my sister. I don't remember who said it. Anyway, I was coming up with this elaborate plan. Will got his sister Preggers and Jace is actually like cousins with a Lightwood somehow because that line that came from Will and Gabriel's sister came out of the Lightwoods that we know and that's why Alec looks so much like Will. But you know, no, that didn't happen. But that would have been cool, right? It turns out Will humiliated her and read her diary in front of lots of people. Please, what an overreaction. Jem still had Will by the wrist, and Jessamine continued to look as if she was watching an exciting play. Oh, Jessamine, shut up. What the hell? Jessamine, last time we're like, oh, she's a little annoying, but she helped Tessa get out of some trouble at the end with Nate, blah, blah, blah. Why on earth is Jessamine sneaking out, dressed like a man at night? Sophie doesn't tell anyone, and then Tessa sees it, and she doesn't question it. I would run up to her and be like, what you doing over there? Why are you so tired all the time? And Nate loves her, and she loves Nate. What? How could 
did she do this to them? And when Charlotte burst into tears, I burst into tears with her. Betraying you to this man who tried to kill everyone in the institute? How could she be so stupid? <sighs> when Sophie hit her on the head with that mirror, I was like, yeah! Talking about binding spells, and they're trying to find one in these books. Do you think she can tell a binding spell from a summoning one? She looked at Tessa. Well, can you? And for that matter, will you pay so little attention at lessons? Can you tell a binding spell from a souffle recipe? And Mortimer, I guess his parents were both warlocks, they adopted him. They were killed because they were making an army of automatrons to kill all the shadow hunters. Mortimer applies for reparations. This is what Will has to say. Very upset Shadow Hunter refused to all die when I wanted them to demand recompense. I don't know how Charlotte can bear to talk to Brother Enoch so often. He gives me the horrors. He gave me a fright. He gives me the horrors. I love the words that come out of their mouths. Tessa and Sophie being trained. Two Lightwood brothers. We got Gabriel and Gideon. I really like Gideon. He's got he's got a good head on his shoulders. Gabriel, when he figures out that his dad really was the reason why his mother died, then maybe he'll come over to Gideon's side. He seems like he's a decent guy and he just needs some guidance. And we also have the Sophie Gideon love storyline going on, which I rather enjoyed as well. I think they are gonna work it out. It looks like we're foreshadowing an ascension. They talk about the Mortal Cup just like, oh, the Mortal Cup, like they have it. So obviously they have it. She actually can become one by just drinking from the Mortal Cup. Sophie is gonna end up doing that. Sophie and Gideon are gonna end up together. Who knows what offspring they're gonna spring. We see Ragnar fell in this book. And he's green. Aloysius Starkweather is all surprised when he sees Tessa because she must look just like her mother. Jasmine and Nate seem to believe Tessa's mom was a shadow hunter and her dad was a demon. Usually, you know, that results in a stillborn as we see in the City of Fallen Angels. Was that woman who talked to her like Hyacinth? I thought she was a fairy. It seemed like they were good friends with her mom, and her mom was... seemed like her mom was a fairy. I don't know. Maybe it was fairy shadow hunter? What do you think Tessa is? What is Tessa? I don't know. I want her to be part shadow hunter. Charlotte is all stressed about this whole I might lose the institute thing. Henry's like, darling, are you quite all right? You look a bit splotchy. He wasn't wrong. Red patches of rage had broken out over Charlotte's face and throat. I think it's charming, said Will. I've heard polka dots are the last word in fashion this season. Will is so much better than Jem. Jem is cute and all, and he's all nice. It's okay, Tess. It's okay to fool around with them both. But, you know, in the end, you gotta choose Will. You know Will's better. Jem's like, oh, we have to bring Tessa. And Will's like, we don't have to bring Tessa. What are you talking about? So you're suggesting we take the train up to York, meet a 90-year-old man, leap on him, and yank out his hair. I'm sure the claim will be ecstatic. They go as a threesome. I'm, I'm all for the threesome. So Will is Welsh. Do you miss Wales? What's to miss? She'd been singing in the ridiculous language. I thought this are dying. We learn a lot about Parabati, and a ruin that you put on your Parabati is more potent than one that you put on yourself or put on by another person, which is interesting. So that's why we always see Alec and Jace, they put the marks on each other. I just thought that was a really fun fact. I'm so excited for City of Lost Souls. So we learned who the Clockwork Prince actually is. It's none of the lead characters. It's not in the trio. The trio. It's not actually a trio. It's more of a threesome if you're gonna go with anything. The Clockwork Prince is actually Mortimer. Warlock Dad was like, you're gonna be the Clockwork Prince with the automatrons that we made. <laughs> We're gonna destroy all the Hado Hunters. <laughs> we, we got a lot of makeout scenes in this book. Scandalous. Scandalous. Will's gone through a tough time. He's got this whole no one can love me thing going on and he wants to escape so he goes to that opium house. Tessa and Jem have to come rescue him. Upon seeing them, Will's like, oh good, now we're all three together. Oh joy, oh goody goody. When he found out that Jem actually likes Tessa or loves Tessa, he seems so surprised. My Jem? My Jem and you. you it's weird that he seems like he didn't even see it coming. Why are you so surprised? Why Why don't you say something to Jem? Why don't they ever talk about it? Jem's like, oh, we never talk about love. But it seems like, Jem, it seems like you know that Will likes her and you're doing it behind his back and that's why you don't talk about it. After this whole drug incident, I don't mind Tessa being attracted to Jem, it's okay. She goes into his room and there's like all this tension and Jem's all like, <sighs> start making out, taking off the, the garments. Tessa's like, 
what comes next? I know, it's the 18th century and stuff. In another part of the book, she references not knowing where babies come from. Why hasn't anyone told Tessa about sex? It seems wrong that a 16-year-old girl would never be told, taught, or her aunt should have told her that sort of stuff. Or don't they have sex ed in school? She obviously likes Jem, but she doesn't love Jem. And she says friendship a lot of times. She never says that to Will. Next morning, we're at breakfast and they're trying to tell the story how they found Will. Everyone's talking and Henry's like, eggs. I do love eggs. I can eat them all day. You might be surprised to know that I saw something rather interesting in the opium den. And Charlotte's all, I'm sure you did. And Henry's all, was it an egg? I, th I thought the whole Henry Charlotte storyline woven through this was so sweet. I know you only married me because you needed a man, so we were in the institute. And she's like, I know you only married me because your father owed me money. And they're like, what? What? Why do you think that? And it was the sweetest thing. And I was like crying because it was so cute. The invention I'm working on could shatter the whole clockwork army into pieces if I get the formulations right. He beams proudly and Charlotte looks at him for a moment and then just leaves. The next night we've got the whole masquerade ball. This is a crazy ass ball. She used to be led in by a demon. I was so excited, just heard a little going. I'm like, yeah. Tessa is disguising herself as Nate's lover, Jessamine. So again, we have this brother-sister incest thing going on. Tessa changed into Jessamine, who's a lot smaller than her. She goes and finds all this stuff out and how Jess is being such a little bitch. They have this lemonade and Will and her go out onto the balcony and mind you, this is the night after she just had this whole hot makeout session with Jem and Will lets down his guard, start making out on the balcony and at this Lightwoods party when Tessa looks like herself again. Just so dangerous and I was just waiting for someone to pop over the doors. Trouble just to go down and she's like all boobs all over the place because she's wearing this really tight corset that's meant for Jessamine. And then Magnus comes out and he's like, hey guys. Hey, cough, cough, over here, hi. So that was a fun scene. And then the whole scene ends up meaning nothing because Magnus is all, oh, there's warlock powder in the drinks that makes you do things that you wouldn't normally do. Tessa takes this as, oh, I don't actually like Will. It was the warlock drink. I love how Tessa's dancing with Nate. God, I'm jealous of every other man who looks at you. You should be looked at only by me. And Tessa's like, good lord, does this really work on other women? We have the very next day, Tessa and Jem are talking in the carriage. Jem wanted to court her. Oh, we should go on chaperoned walking dates. And then five seconds later, they're making out again in like, the carriage. And he's like, by the angel, perhaps we do need a chaperone. Then they're on their way to visit Jessamine, who is in Silent City. How much hatred do you hold for Jessamine? Tessa comes over. She's like, Jessamine, I brought you something. Is it from Nate? No, it's not from Nate. Why would Tessa bring you something from Nate? What is wrong with you? It's called the Infernal Devices. We don't know what an Infernal Device is. We find out that Henry has invented this Infernal Device that makes the clockworks explode. It's probably gonna make different things that are infernal that help win this whole war. We also hear about this confuser thing that Henry has. That just spells disaster. I thought maybe before the end of this, someone's gonna get confused by accident and just splurt out everything. I think this will definitely come into play. If by accident, maybe Will will get confused in front of Jem and he'll be like, I love Tessa, blah, 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 blah. I really love when Will first writes his back from finding out the curse wasn't real. Calm down, stop singing. So we meet the head of the werewolf pack, Scott Woosley. He is so funny. 19th century hippie. And he has like a colored monocle. Let's talk about Bridget for a second. I kind of thought there was something weird about Bridget. I don't know if it's gonna come into play later or not. I don't know, she's introduced in the whole training scene and she attacks Gabriel. Sophie obviously is creeped out by her. Tess is like, what's wrong? And she's like, oh, it's Bridget. She's so weird. Because Bridget is always howling these weird ballads that parallel what's actually going on in the story which is hilarious. By the way, where Jem is right about to announce their engagement at the end, she sings about the boy who I love most of all goes by the name of Will. Oh, if that's not foreshadowing, I don't know what is. She just has to end up with Will. And if she doesn't end up with Will, it better be a threesome because I'm gonna be really sad if she's just like, I can't do this, I can't break up Parabot to you because you know, we all love each other. We got lots of people living in the Institute now. We got Gideon joining the party. Can you say your name Cicely or Chesley? 
or Sicily or Sicily. She's gonna be living there too, it looks like. She wants to be a shadow hunter. And it's just all very overwhelming and great. And I am so excited for the next one. So I wanna know your favorite parts. Do you like the new characters? Are you still behind Will? Are you still behind Jem? Or are you for 37? Do you think Shem's gonna die? What do you think is gonna happen in the next one? They're building up to a war. It ended with those beetle things. I feel so bad for Will. I am so heartbroken for Will. Thanks for watching. Bye!